Good morning all, so we thought we'd do another video for you this morning. Um, we're going to be doing a card using our brand new Christmas launch, which um, we did on Crane Craft, or if you caught us on Facebook in the week, you will see them there. So let's have a look at what we're going to be using. We have got, oh quickly, I'll just let you know these and then I can get them out of our way. We again have our um, foam pads back in stock, so you get, I'll just whip that off for a minute so you can see it properly. So you've got, all fingers and thumbs, you get 1600 on a roll, 25ml by 25ml by 2ml. And we have also got the Make Art Station back in stock. Um, lots of you were asking me about this in the week because it was um, something I used on TV uh, and didn't tell anybody what it was for some reason. Um, so this is what you saw me use if you caught our TV show on Wednesday uh, with the stencils, but you can use it for all sorts of things. It's a fabulous piece of equipment. Um, I did buy one for Mum for Mother's Day and um, ended up having to buy a replacement because I claimed it. So that's those two things back in stock. So let's get on to what we have. Oh, sorry, you got my arm right across the screen there. So what we're bringing to today, what we're using. So we are using the gift stamp set, um, the fireplace on Christmas Eve, uh, mask it, clean colour pens, our sticky glue that comes in the two sizes. We're using Stardust Stickles, Onyx Black VersaFine and our Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. So let's have a closer look at our stamps. So the gifts are um, designed not to be specific for any occasion. So you can use these with it for anything, whatever sentiment you put on it, you don't even have to put a sentiment. There's nothing related specifically to Christmas on these. And then we have the fireplace on Christmas Eve. Love this stamp set. Um, you don't have to colour this. I am going to be colouring both of these today, but you don't have to. Um, maybe I'll add another little video in, hopefully during the week. And I can show you that you can do use this just by doing a coloured background. Um, and then we also have, it was the night before Christmas, and have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Um, uh, we are using mask it. So again, lots of you have asked what we do with the mask it. So I'm going to give you a quick brief rundown on how to use the mask it. We are using quite a selection of clean colour pens today. I'm not going to list all the names, but as I go along, I will give you the names. And if anybody wants a list of the ones I've specifically used, because I might even change them up as I'm going along. You never know. Um, these are the colours we are going to go with today. So as I said, we've got Stardust Stickles. I use a lot of the Stardust Stickles if I'm going to use stickles because well, it's got holographic glitter in it. So whatever colour it, you use it with, it works really well with. Obviously the Onyx Black and the Crystal Clear that you see me using a lot. And our Sticky Glue. We will also be using the Red Line Tape as well because it's super strong. Um, just so that you know that you might need some of that too. Uh, the glue comes in two different sizes, 120ml or 30ml. So let's get started. Let's clear all of this out of our way. So it's a little one of those cards you can, I hope you love it when, it, when you get it finished. It's not a quick five minute card today. Um, I have prepped a lot of it ahead of time, but I'm gonna give you the measurements, <coughs> excuse me, the measurements now, um, because as I say, every time because of the fact that our um, card isn't exactly 8x8, eight eight. it does cause us a few issues as far as our cutting sizes go. So let's start with our card. We have an 8x8 eight eight card. I'm going to explain the score lines to you as we go along, but you will need to score it at, let me just double check this, um, da -da 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 -da. I lied, sorry. Here we go, we're going to score at two inches here and then spin it the card round and you need to score it an inch on this side and two and a half inches. But I'll score that as we go in so that you can see. And it's you must remember not that you need to spin it round, don't find that half inch on this side because it won't work out. I'll explain as we're going along. Um, and then we have a thicker card stock, it might be worth sacrificing an 8x8 card to do this if you haven't got a heavier weight card stock. Although the card stock we have on our website um, and the super smooth card stock, stamping card stock, would work quite well for this too. 
um, just be aware. So this one is cut at eight and a quarter by five and seven eighths. I'm sorry, I know it's horrible. And then we scored it at half an inch and two and a half inches. Let me just grab my scoreboard so I can explain that bit to you because otherwise I've learned the hard way at our workshops that sometimes I explain it one way and other people take it another way. Um, let's bring this up rather than fiddle about with the... So it would score at half an inch and then at two and a half inches. So this gap here between the two score lines is two inches. So that's those pieces. Then, then it gets a little bit easier, I think. <laughs> now some of these I have already inked and stamped so they don't look too pretty on the back, but it will come to light in a moment. So you need two pieces, um, the white, which is watercolor cardstock because I'm using clean color pens and they work better on watercolor card for me, um, but that's entirely your choice, um, is one and a half inches by seven and three eighths in length. So you need two white that size and two black one and three quarter inches by seven and five eighths. That's those two pieces. Um, the largest piece we're going to use, see look you saw a sneak peek, um, is, let me find this one, seven, the white is seven and a quarter inch square and the black is seven and a half inch square. Um, then we have a smaller square. The white is five and three eighths square and the black is five and seven eighths square. It's like that so that you get that little border all the way around the edge. If you want to round these up, feel free. You've just got to remember you need to give yourself space to stamp the fireplace on the front of this one. So don't go too much smaller. In fact, I don't think you could go any smaller by the looks of my... No, you couldn't really go any smaller. And then last but not least, the last piece we have, the white is two and seven eighths by seven and three eighths. And the black is one... Sorry, three and one eighth by seven and five eighths. My goodness, that's far too many different measurements. You're going to have to keep pausing me <coughs> to get that right. So you saw where our score was for... Um, this piece so we've scored at half an inch and then again at two and a half inches so for our card we are going to score at half an inch and we are going to score again Two and a half inches. Then you're going to spin your card round, tuck that in that tight corner there and score at two inches. Don't let your card move when you're doing this. So there we go. And then we're just going to fold those score lines in. I never know which way I'm supposed to score them. Whether you go valleys down, valleys up. I don't think it matters so long as it works for you. I think you're supposed to go valleys down. Oh, see, look, I don't know. The way I do it works for me, so that's the way I do it. And that should technically fold over and give you a square in there. Now don't stick anything yet, please don't stick anything yet because we need to load it all up inside because we're going to decorate the back, the front and the sides and then we have this other panel here. Again, don't decorate it but this is how this will work. So we will have something like this. That's our plan. Whether it works actually is going to be something like that because we need to fold that down when we get to sticking it and it will stick against the edge but we'll talk you through that in a moment so I'm just going to pop those off to one side and get rid of my scoring board and then we'll get started 
So as I said, this isn't a really quick two minute card. We have got um, some parts already done for you. <coughs> so presents I've stamped um, embossed in black on it. Oh, sorry, stamped in black onyx, embossed in crystal clear. And then I've coloured them with the clean colour pens and I've popped lots and lots of sparkle on there. Christmas cards need to be sparkly. So, where is I going to pick it up? There we go. You can see the sparkle on those. Um, so I'm just going to show you how, to, how we did this. <coughs> um, using the mask, mask it as well. Um, this is actually going to be the piece that tucks in under here. So we're only actually going to do the top and bottom of this particular card, piece of card. Because I'm using the individual presents off our set of stamps, so we're using these little individual parcels, I'm just going to stamp out a couple and show you what we need to do when I can find my blocks for these. I thought I'd got myself really organised. Missed the blocks. Just grab those out. It's like everything, when you're starting a new place, you've got to find where everything fits, haven't you? So that's where we're at. So the mask, it comes with two sheets in it. They're um, repositionable peels on and off, a black carrier sheet, sorry, a clear carrier sheet. It's kind of got a furry feel to it, really light furry feel. So you're going to stamp your image out. I'm not going to do all of these because obviously we've already got these stamped out. Put that off to one side for a second. And then you take your scissors. Now I personally cut myself a space all the way around the edge. Now, ladies at my class will have remembered this from when we did a workshop with the daffodils. I take it off the carrier sheet and cut it from there. If you want to, leave it on the carrier sheet. It is easier to cut it on the carrier sheet, um, but you don't, you've got nowhere then to put it back on, so you need a second piece of acetate. Now, when you're cutting a mask, you're cutting it to cover over the exact stamped image, so don't just roughly go around the edge. You do need to spend a little bit of time and cut this mask out. So you're not going to see me cut all of this out. So you are going to go right into the very edge of your stamped image. Okay? And then I would pop it back on my carrier sheet because then I've got it ready for when I want to use it. You can keep hold of these. They're fairly repositionable for quite some time. Um, as you can see, I'm just grabbing mine so that you can see all of my little parcels. Mine are all very well loved. They're not even on the carrier sheets properly at the moment because I was prepping for this last night. So you can... Pick it up, pop it back on there. Some of them can be really fiddly, but I think they make such a difference to what we're doing, they're worth spending that time to do it. And you don't really want them to fold back on themselves because they'll stick to themselves. So they are our mask it masks. <coughs> Seem to have got a bit of a tickle in my throat this morning. So again, I'll pop those out of the way just while we work on this we will be using those in a moment so we're going to come <coughs> back into here take our stamp ink it up remember lots of little light taps not lots of pressure and we're just going to stamp that wherever now remember i said to you we're only going to see the very smallest bit so actually i'm only going to put in a tiny little bit of this parcel because on this one, you're not going to see very much. I'm going to get some embossing powder on there quickly. Oh, my card. Get 
embossing powder on there. This is the bit that's probably the most time consuming is building up the layers here, but I think it's worth it. It really finishes the card. So as I said, I'm not, you're not gonna see me do the whole lot, but just a few to show you. So we're gonna heat this up from underneath. Again, remember I always do it from underneath because it gives me a barrier between the two, but you don't have to. If you would rather just do it from the top, you can do that too. Then we are going to take the parcel mask that we've just stamped, place that over the top. And then we can use the same stamp again, or you can take a different stamp. I think I'll go in with a different stamp. Let's take one of the small ones. And we're just going to ink that one up too. Lots of little light taps. And that means you can layer this one over the top of it and it looks like the parcel is behind it. And we just get the powder on because obviously that bit needs to be done quite quickly. Do you see what I mean? The parcel looks like it's behind. I'll just heat that one as well. this one up. And then so then you need to pop this mask over the top of that one. Um, I'll pop a tiny little one on now. Sorry you're getting lots of my arms in this one. I have to work on that. It's positioning everything so that I'm not stretching over all the time. I think my pens are in my way today. I'll now need to know I need a pin pot. I haven't got as big a space, you see, on the desktop as I had previously. So again, just pop that in behind the last one. Embossing powder is what I'm looking for. And just keep building and building and building. So you'll get the idea, that's what we would kind of be doing. Um, let me grab the proper one, the one that I've already coloured. And so we'll end up with something along those lines. So you can see along the bottom I've done it hopefully so that we're going to be able to see those parcels as you see them. And along the top it doesn't really matter if it covers up some of this parcel. Um, that's what we've done there. So I'll just clear these bits away and we will get to the fireplace. Bear with me a second. Too many bits and pieces in a little place. So I'll just pop these off to one side so they're out of our way. And I'm gonna bring in the piece for our fireplace. So this is our small square, that, um, the smaller of the squares and we're going to stamp our fireplace directly onto that. So again, it's a large stamp, so take the time to ink it up. Bear with me, I've just got to clear some of these pens out of my way because I can see them all go flying and that won't be much fun either. That's better, we have room to move. So we're going to ink the stamp up, lots and lots of little light taps. I'm not pressing hard, um, it's, it sounds like I am, but I really am not. I'm just lots and lots of little light taps. Plenty of ink, big stamp, plenty of ink. to stamp this image out. I'm going to 
to try and do it without getting my head in the camera. Place that down. Again, I'm working on watercolour card for this because I wanted it to be able to colour it with the water clean colour pens and I find them easier to use on watercolour cardstock. Spend the time making sure you've got this stamped out and pressed down in lots of places. Even stand up maybe to do it. Plenty of pressure. Sorry, we're going a bit wobbly for a second here, but that will stop in a minute. And there we go. I've got a squeaky chair. And then we're going to peel that off and we have a fabulous image of our fireplace. We're going to get some embossing powder on the top of that. Now, if you are not great at colouring, embossing powder is definitely your friend because it will help you stay in the light. Um, and it also helps you with the blending, I find because the um, ink sometimes will sit on the top of the embossing powder and that say, means that your powder, if you haven't got enough of a particular colour down or something like that, it's already there kind of in the waiting for you. Now this one will just take me a couple of minutes to emboss, so bear with me a second. quite warm underneath this card stock when you're doing this so do mind your fingers as well when you're going along. I've just seen, I can't believe we're at nearly 23 minutes. I said I was going to try and keep this under half an hour, but I don't think that's going to happen, is it? I can't believe how fast this time goes when I'm doing this video to this. So there is our fireplace on Christmas Eve. And as I said to you, remember at the beginning, don't go too small with your card for this piece. We are pretty much edge to edge on this. So that is the smallest you can really go. So we are now going to grab our clean colour pens. Ooh. As I said, there's lots and lots here. Um, I just took a random selection. And we're just going to colour this in. So we have to have a bright red stocking, really, don't we? I always have kitchen roll beside me, kitchen paper, um, when I'm using the clean colour pens. For two different reasons. One is... Hang on, isn't it? I find it really difficult to talk and colour at the same time, which is really weird putting the two together. But obviously, when I'm doing a video, I kind of have to do that, don't I? I'm not going to blend this one, and so the, the clean the uh, the the kitchen paper is here to so that you can blot with it. And also, when you're blending and you're using one of the lighter colours from and picking up the darker and blending through, sometimes you take too much of the colour. Um, so you can clean your brush off and um, your pen off. So blot it as you're going along. Because, as I said, the embossing powder is lovely that it helps you stay in the lines, but it also allows the ink to sit on the top and then you start smudging it. So let's do a fireplace now. So for the fireplace, I'm just going to go in and put a little bit of red along the bottom. Then I'm going to take the yellow... So we have used red and yellow only on these two at the moment. And in circular motions, I'm going to take that colour up. Now, as I said, it picks up the colour on the brush. You can kind of see that. I think I came in too quick on you. So we've picked up the colour on the brush. Now, if I just wipe over, it takes the colour away. And it means I can go back in and bring that, start blending that colour again and it will allow me 
to, to go through to the orange and then up to the yellow at the top of our fireplace. <clears throat> now I'm no expert at colouring but I love doing it. I found it a real really nice way to switch off at the moment which is really it's nice to do. So um, we're just going to pop in a little bit of colour here on our greenery for our candles. And then on our candles, I'm going to top, pop in the tiniest little bit of orange. Oh no, sorry, red again. So the greens I just used were um, light green and yellow green. I'm going to try and tell you which colours I'm using as I'm going. And then again, I'm taking the yellow and I'm just going to spread that out and come away from the uh, candle flame. I think we'll have some red candles because it's Christmas and we can. And I'm just going to block that so I don't smudge it. Um, my wall, rather than doing it brown, which I find I'm not the best at blending with the browns, um, I am just going to go in with, we have brick beige, pale grey, warm grey two, and mid grey and just a little combination of all of these and do it till you've found the combination you like and I'm just going to go in on each of the bricks I don't know if I can home in on me a little bit more let's have a look, oh sorry, bashed the table can we come in a bit? does it come in a bit? I don't know if it's going to or not. No, I'll work on that um, so that we can kind of show you maybe a bit closer what I'm doing. So I'm going to bring this up to you for a minute. So I've just put tiny little blobs in the corner here and I would normally work a little bit quicker just to blend those across. My goodness, this isn't easy doing in the air. I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> so, as you can see. And, you know, if you do go over the edge, it doesn't really matter. So, there we go. Can you see that? I'll just do a couple of um, of the presents because I have already done all of this already. Again, with the floor, I didn't want to go in with red brick. So I literally have gone in where there is black lines on here. I will come back in and show you closer up in a moment. And then I just scribbled, literally scribbled over where I've coloured those black lines and that's where the embossing powder becomes your friend because it sits on the top and it allows you to really move that around. Now I was a disaster at colour until I found clean colour pens. I will be completely honest. I coloured like my seven-year-old, in fact, my seven-year-old niece did colour better than me. Um, so that's kind of how I've made these work for me. Whether I'm doing it right or wrong, I don't know. But I like what I'm doing and I'm enjoying it. And as I said, that is what crafting is about. Enjoy what you're doing and don't worry about what everybody else says. Do what you're enjoying doing and just keep playing until you're happy with the colors that you've got so the colors I have used for my floor and for my brick walls at the top which I would finish obviously um, beige brick sorry no big brick beige warm gray two mid gray and pale gray I'm just going to go in really quickly with a colored parcel so I have picked um, 
This one is deep blue and I'm just going to take a little bit along the edge here on the box and then with the pale light blue this one is, I'm just picking that colour up and spreading it across. Now I'm going to get about halfway and it's still going to be too dark so go in, wipe your excess off your brush and go back and that will lighten those colours for you. And as you can see, I am not being particularly careful about how I'm colouring these. It is probably a little bit difficult to see because it seems to be a long way away. But I am just scribbling. Do you think I can try one up high so that you can see that I really am just scribbling? Um, let's do a green because that shows up quite well. So this is just a green, number 040. And I'm just going to put a streak down there. I have to work out how to zoom this. And then this one is yellow green, which is number 053. And I am just picking up that colour, the dark, in circular motions. Take the excess green off because I want it to go to light. And we've got a blended parcel. So that's how easy they are to do. Once I've done that, remember, go in and blot. Once I've done all those parcels and we've got a cookie, we've got our milk, you can so you can really go to town on this. And we've got the cookie here and some milk for Father Christmas. The one thing that's missing is a carrot for the reindeer. Oh, that's a bit sad, isn't it? So you can see how quickly that would build up. And this is what I finished up with. Again, do it whatever colours you want it to be in. There is no right or wrong. Um, I have also done, let me just clear out some of these. I've also done the large square with the gifts set. Now on this one, I had a few marks and I'm gonna point them out to you. You can see where they are. There's a line here and this is where I hadn't blotted it and that's what it will cause you. Um, but for us, we're lucky because when we put this card together, it won't affect it anyway, because that piece is hidden. So that's my saving grace. Um, so I'm just gonna stick this all together really quickly. Now I know I normally tell you as I'm going along, I'll stick one piece down but I haven't with this one um, purely because obviously I wanted to show you all the different pieces that go together with it um, but if I was doing this normally just by myself I would get all these layers done before I carried on um, so we'll stick that down I have already put the stickles on these but if you're making this card yourself either do your colouring before do your stickles and leave it to dry or and then come back to it the next morning to build it or um or later on in the day or um build it and then put your stickles on so you've got a choice on which way round you do this <coughs> excuse me i right tickle in my throat this morning Again, we're just building this up. I'm not putting in a, any dimension on these pieces. The reason being we want that stand to stand square. And if we start putting dimensions behind these, that's not gonna happen. So don't do any dimension on your panels. You can on the back of your fireplace because that's your final piece. And that's where I'm gonna put some dimension. And if you wanted to, you could stamp it out and colour it again and this is a really this is probably something I should have mentioned you can pop um, some dimension on your fireplace or on these panels at the side um, on the actual image but you can't put the dimension between the two layers um, and if you've coloured something and you don't like the look of it stamp it out cut it out 
stick it over the top. So you don't have, you won't have ruined the whole thing just because you don't like it. So if you coloured this parcel here and you didn't like the colour of it, just stamp it on another piece of paper, colour it again, cut that parcel out, give it a bit of dimension with some foam pads behind it, away you go. That would work. So don't panic. There is there is always a way to rectify something you've done that you don't like. See, look, I was going to try and do this panel, this panel with the larger um, stack, slimline stack, but it wouldn't have been seen. So that was going to have been a waste of my time to colour it in. So I thought, what are you playing at? So we just turned the card over. I'm not wasting watercolour card to do that. So see, look, we all make mistakes, but nobody knows that's underneath, do they? Only you and me. So that's all of our panels just about layered up. Now, as I said, I'm gonna put some foam pads on this one, which is our fireplace. So we've got our finished colored fireplace and we're just gonna layer up some foam pads on here because this piece doesn't have anything to, to give the shape, it doesn't form the build of the structure of the card. I do do a little bit of overkill when it comes to foam pads, I'm afraid. Because you can guarantee that we've missed one in a place and it will make a difference. So now I just overkill it. I've got 1600 of them. I can overkill for now. Now remember what I've always say about the foam pads, they are super, super, super sticky. So to give yourself um, a little bit of leeway, pop some glue on the back of them as well. And that just means if you're not quite where you want it to be, you have got a little bit of a chance of getting that off without causing any damage and being able to reposition it. And we will layer that one on there. Hopefully we're fairly central. I think we are. So that's all our panels done. Now we've just got to stick them on our card. So again, glue on the back. This is the large square in the middle. I always do a prototype before I start making um, a constructed card. Um, but I haven't actually done one of these complete yet. So we'll do this together, shall we? I've only done my construction. I was gonna do a really quick, simple card with these to show you today, but I thought, you know, it's Christmas. Let's go all out. Let's do a fireplace on Christmas Eve, all out. Okay, now I'm gonna open this card back up because I want my panel central on these. Put my centre one in first. Pop that in the middle here. To be honest, if you did want to add some dimension to the outside, these two skinny panels are the two you can do it with because they're not affected by, they don't affect anything, it's just more decoration on these two. Um, rather than adding dimension um, but I probably wouldn't for me just because I like them all the same this is a really nice card to do it takes a little while to do it because there is quite a bit of colouring the way I've done it but it's also really therapeutic and then once you've done all your panels it does come together really quite quickly so that's those panels all put together. Now we need some red liner tape on here. Right, now how are we gonna get this to show on camera? I need to lay this down with this flap flat, not tucked under, completely flat. I'm gonna get some red liner tape on here. Now we all know red liner tape isn't forgiving. Um, so be aware of that when you come to do this. It is not very forgiving. 
If you want, you can do the same with the red liner as you would do as I've just done with the foam pads and pop a little bit of glue on there, which will give you a little, a tiny amount of leeway, but not huge amount. So I'm just going to run my glue along there. Then we are going to fold this card. Let me spin it around. So this flap is still laying flat against the back of the card. So we're going to fold this card over and lay it down and press along where that flap is because we want that flap to stick underneath there. And hopefully that's exactly what has happened. happened. And we are now stuck like so. So we've got a nice square. By laying it flat, it holds itself where it needs to be. And then you can pop that back out and you get your square. Or rectangle as it actually is. And so obviously you've got your decoration here. We are then going to... Right, this piece is going to go on here at this angle. So you need to put your, your flat to your right hand side before we stick this down. And again, you can put dimension on here if you want. I'm not going to just for the speed. My goodness, 41, 42 minutes nearly. I'm sorry, I'm trying so hard to make these quicker for you, but I'm not doing a very good job of it, am I? They're all a bit getting a bit long. I'm gonna have to start thinning them out a bit, I think. I'm gonna pull my flap out of the way because it's causing me a problem. Position that on there. And the same thing, I need to lay my flap flat. It really doesn't show great on here, does it? So this is the flap and it would fold underneath there. I need to lay it flat against the back of the card. Red liner tape. Take that excess off. Take the tape off, should I say. Oh, it doesn't want to come away. Again, I'm going to give myself a little bit of playroom. Pop that along the back there. Now, this needs to lay flat. This piece, you're going to take the edge that's folded. Remember, this is laid flat. And you're going to take it right up to the very edge of your card. And as much in the middle as we can. that down and hopefully no nope, it moved so we'll try that again I'll put that where we want it roughly there I'm gonna hold that in place for a moment So that now sits like so. Now you can leave it open. I wouldn't recommend it because it gets a bit front heavy. I want to tape that onto here now. Like so, I think. That kind of gives us the square top and bottom, doesn't it? So again, some red line tape. So you need the strength and also we've got some glitter on here so it does fight it a little bit when I take the glue on there again it does help us a little bit so I'm going to fold everything as flat as I can and position that where I want that to be. 
Just hold that in place for a moment. And there we have our, I don't even know what the name of this card would be. Box card, I suppose, something along those lines. Um, I think that works out quite well. The fireplace really sets this off. The parcels are just a little extra, so if you don't haven't got the parcels, make it your fireplace. Just ink your background. You don't have to do all the colouring in. Remember, we've coloured the two panels, but really you don't see very much of this panel. Um, maybe we could have done a panel here. That might have been quite nice. So I might do that. Or oh, it gives you somewhere to write, doesn't it? If you wanted to, you can pop your, your sentiment or um, who you're sending it to, or you've got the back of your card for that. So there we go, that is our finished card for today. Um, I will give you the list of the pens that we've used here today quickly. Um, so the colours that I've used on this particular particular card are, are you ready for this? I won't go really fast, but we're already nearly 50 minutes into the video. Um, we've got green. Sorry, everything's moving around on me. We've got green, we've got lilac, wine red, light violet, shadow mauve, yellow green, it's my favourite colour that one, yellow green, dark pink, Persian blue, blush, light blue, deep blue, oh, sorry, um, brick beige, English lavender, scarlet red, cobalt blue, violet, yellow, pale grey, brown, pink, sugared almond pink, deep violet, warm grey two, mid grey, red, and light green. So they're all the colours I've used. We've also used the crystal clear embossing powder. We've used our sticky glue, um, stardust stickles. I've literally, with the stardust stickles, gone over where, pretty much wherever we've got a black shadow or a black um, sketch in there. I've kind of done the detail on the parcels. So the bows, the ribbons, um, the hearts, that kind of stuff is where I went with the glitter. Uh, Versify and Onyx Black. We've also used Stampwise, um, Mask It, Fireplace on Christmas Eve, which you get towards the night before Christmas and have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year, and the Gifts Stamp Set. These are our 12 99 stamp sets, both of these. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six large stamps on this one. So obviously one big one. This one is fabulous for the new slimline cards that everybody seems to be enjoying making. And then this card, this set comes with the large fireplace stamp and then towards the night before Christmas and have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year sentiment. So let's have a look at another couple of um, the cards that we have can make with this one. Bear with me, let's put that one off a second. So this is with the Christmas presents in coloured with pencils. Oh, sorry, the gifts, not the Christmas presents. Fireplace on Christmas Eve. Really, really lovely little one. This is what I mean by the slimline cards. It makes a fabulous slimline card, that particular set of stamps. And I mentioned earlier, you don't have to colour in these, the fireplace stamp. This is just an inked background, um, stamped in black, and a couple of the parcels just um, have picked up some of the colour from behind in Pacific places. Not done on purpose, just literally stamped in black on the top. Another fireplace one. This has been paper pieced. So it's been stamped onto cardstock in or craft cardstock in black ink, um, some white pencil on there or pen on there, and the red parcels have all been cut out. Another parcels one. Again, monochrome coloured with pencils, and this has been masked. So what you saw me doing earlier with the mask, this is exactly how that one's made. And another one done with the fireplace. The fireplace just popped off to one side with the ho 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 stamp set. One more gifts one. Red, white and grey, how wrong can you go? Um, the sentiment on this one is actually from our Christmas Quotes stamp set as well. So we will come back in 
with what we have used today and our finished card. So this is our finished card. Remember how we did that? So if anybody needs any of the Pacific measurements or is stumbling, please email me. I will try and write them down in some kind of form. Um, so we've got Fireplace on Christmas Eve stamp set, the Gifts stamp set, Mask it, and the Clean Colour Pens are our main focus on this. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If there's anything else specific that you would like to see, please let us know and we will do our best to come up with um, the, the demo videos you would like to see. We are working our way through a very long list, so please bear with us and um, have a lovely day. Take care. Bye.